What's up guys, this is Roach the Famous, and this is Ace talking, not Drifter, because the very beginning of this commentary got cut off, and it was just um, me introducing Drifter. So he all he said was what his channel is about, how he's on Machinima and stuff like that, just the first 10, 20 seconds of it. So Drifter was just explaining how many subs he got and things like that, so if you guys are wondering why he got cut into it, um, that's probably why the um, recording got messed up. So this is the commentary. So why did you it's start It's all your, relative. Yeah, why did you start your YouTube channel? Because I like to tell stories, and at first that was with Halo Machinimas, and now that's mostly with Call of Duty Machinimas and uh, commentary, though I'm getting into the live action stuff a little bit. Yeah, I heard you told me a funny story before we even started this about one of your live actions incidents. You want to explain that to us? Uh, yeah, um, a lot of my subscribers already know about it, but it's one where I almost died. Uh, essentially, one summer I got a, a rather large paycheck from Machinima.com, and me and a friend of mine from Wisconsin who also does Machinima, we had this brilliant idea that we're going to travel down to Southern California to the Salton Sea, which for those of you that don't know, the Salton Sea is like a giant inland sea in Southern California that nobody knows about because it's in the middle of the desert. It's an ecological disaster that's filled with salt and poison that killed all the fish and all the birds. So there's like, uh, instead of a beach, there's bones that's about knee deep and it's all <laughs> white and horrifying. And the entire community dried up and it's like a giant ghost town and it looks just like Fallout. And we thought we'd go there and film, so it was around like 110, 120 degrees that day. And we filmed for about 10 hours, and toward the end of the day, my friend from Wisconsin, Jordan, had got heat exhaustion. We had to rush him back to the hotel, and he got better. And then later that night, while we were in a Chinese restaurant, I got late onset heat exhaustion, and it was screwing with my nervous system to where I couldn't feel myself breathing. Like, I was able to breathe normally. But the feedback, like the feedback of the sense of the lungs being full of air wasn't there, so it felt like I was suffocating and burning at the same time, and I panicked and like went to the bathroom and tried to breathe, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like trying to make myself breathe and throw in water on myself to cool it down to like trash the whole bathroom. We're storming out of the Chinese restaurant. I'm like, fuck it, we're leaving right now. We're leaving right fucking now. Just slapped down a wad of money. I couldn't even count for the Chinese woman. She thought I was having a, an, an allergic reaction to our food because it was so full of MSGs and flipping out. And we went to the hospital. Uh, by the time we got to the hospital, hospital, my electrolytes, I was like an electrolyte shock. And that's where you start getting cramps and twitches really bad. And uh, there I am up in, up in the hospital, all cramped and twitched. And they asked me what I was doing. I was like, oh, I was out filming at the Salton Sea. And they're like, what in the hell were you doing out there? Don't you know the air is like 80% salt out there? And you, uh, de yeah, what is it, dehydrate? And I'm like, I, 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 I know now. I, I, I. <laughs> yeah, I almost died on your for that words. one. Uh, that was day one of five for filming, so that project went down the shitter. We have about a 75-80% of a pilot episode and nothing else, and all that money went kapow, and I went back to eating peanut butter and jelly for a long time. Eating that top ramen, dude. <laughs> yeah, oh boy, that stuff. I had enough of that. <laughs> um, you also told me before we started another story on your machinimas and maybe yes. how you almost quit YouTube. Yes, this has to do with Haughty McBloggy. For those of you that are familiar with Halo, uh, her blog, or, or Halo Waypoint, uh, I had a little bit of a history with her. No, not a romantic history. She's married, she has children and stuff. But I was ready to quit making Machinima because I was making Halo Machinimas back in the day, and they really weren't doing too good. So I made one more called How Not to Defuse the Bomb. You can't find it now because it got uh, claimed for copyrighted music. I had the, uh, what's the, I, I had, I had the Rick Roll song in there. <laughs> but anyway... I made this, and I was like, alright, this is my retirement video. Somehow she saw it in all of the random internets. She found it, she featured it on her blog, since the people from Bungie are always on her blog. They saw it, they loved it, they featured it on Bungie.net, and blew up to like 40,000 views overnight, whereas my previous best was like 210, so I was amazed. I thought it was awesome. I sent her a thank you note, she said no problem, it was funny. Uh, so I went back to making Machinimas. About two or three videos later, I made The Lighthouse, which was a scary Halo Machinima. And I sent her a message telling her that, you know, since she featured my last video, that uh, I, I continued making the videos. I want to say thank you, and I hope that she enjoys this latest video. She said she liked it. She featured it on her blog again, and it went on Bungie again, and it blew up again, which was awesome. So I sent her another thank you, and in the thank you, I mentioned that I needed a voice actor for another project, which uh, the project turned out to be the gift of mercy. That one is actually still on YouTube because it didn't have copyright in it. 
and I got her to voice act for me, but she'd never voice acted, so it was really weird. I'm like a nobody on YouTube, but I have to coach her to do voice acting because she doesn't really know about it or how to put a sock on the microphone to prevent the pop and the hiss and that sort of stuff. And she gets the voice acting done. Voice acting is really good. The video takes forever to make. The video does okay. During that period of time, she ended up getting uh, hired by Halo Waypoint to be kind of like the voice of Halo on Halo Waypoint and to do her videos and stuff. And though uh, communication became more limited due to her because the fans just kept piling up, it, it seemed like I would like maybe just pat myself on the back a little bit. I think the people at 343 Studios might have seen the gift of mercy and be like, wow, this woman has a huge following on the internet and a good voice and she can voice act. Maybe we'll hire her hire her so that kind of worked out except her voice is now copyrighted and she can't voice act for me anymore it's kind of sucks that does suck uh also you got another story because you're filled with stories a man of st many tales of how your subscribers bought you a whole entire computer do you want to <laughs> uh yeah thing? that was uh at about the time that i i had quit my minimum wage job on campus to do youtube full time Get that youtube so money <laughs> yeah, it was it was making more than my you know 15 hour a week minimum wage job that I didn't like much anyway, so I quit. And about a couple of weeks later, after the bridges at work were, were sufficiently burned, that uh, my desktop I have two computers, I have a desktop and a laptop. The desktop died. It was in bad shape to begin with since my dog knocked it over, but it finally died. It finally just completely bricked, and it was now just an expensive paperweight couldn't fix it spent a couple hundred dollars trying to fix it no good no nothing and all that sucks so I was making videos on my laptop but for one day and then the next day the laptop died it had some sort of massive hard drive failure and uh, tech support was pretty worthless there so here I am quitting my job and then I can't do my other job because I have no computers and some friends of mine, Cinematic uh, and Dan is allied and other people, made videos for me on their channels. And I was doing ghetto stuff like downloading it from Dropbox or ripping it from YouTube on my Android phone and like trying to upload it to my channel to get it up there and stuff like that or going to school. I had to do a commentary with a friend on my phone's version of Skype just so that I could talk to my own subscribers. And ended up opening up a like a PayPal donation link for the money to go toward a new computer in the wedding because I was going to get married in a little bit and the the, the they would fund the computer to get to go back to work to afford the wedding and all that sort of stuff. So it was a pretty hectic time for you at that moment, like to try to get that yeah. new computer. Yeah, because it it also came at a time where I just paid all my tuition, and all my rent, and all my everything, and I was pretty much bust for money, like. I really just wouldn't have been able to get a new computer for a couple of months because Machinima pays, I don't know, like once uh, or four times a year. So it takes a long time for that to come in. And I was just totally SOL. And when I posted the video, I got a lot, a lot of hate for it. Like a lot of subscribers just wrote, get a fucking job or uh, just stuff <laughs> like that. Kind people, like, man. <laughs> yeah. Like you should sell your car because my grandmother had helped buy me a car as a graduation present. And they're like, look, like, look, bitch, you just got a car. You should sell that thing and uh, get a computer. So I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to sell the best present I've ever got in my life. That's going to go great. My grandma's going to kick my ass. But you know, we had a lot of other people just up and just drop money on me, which was crazy. People that I'd never heard of, never spoken to before, people that never left a comment. Most of the people that dropped cash in, in, in ludicrous amounts were people that uh, had never commented or anything. And even weirder was, even though I only have 4% uh, of my subscribers as women, uh, most of the money came from women, which was it, it was crazy. I didn't understand it, but they, they ended up putting in a pretty significant amount and it paid for almost all of a new computer, which I bought and I immediately went back to uh, making videos, and things are doing much, much better now. Yeah, well, here's one of my subscribers' favorite questions for me to ask you is pretty much like, have you ever gotten noticed in real life? Have you ever had a time when someone saw you, uh, heard you on the internet, and fanboyed out over you? Have you ever had that? Uh, let's see, noticed in real life. I no. No. I did. I did. I did have people. I introduced myself once at the video game club, and people were like, "Oh, I've heard of you." And I did have one guy that noticed the patch on my jacket because I have a jacket with a lot of patches, and one of them has my symbolic yin yang, and the other one has a, the Euphorian film symbol. And the guy noticed the Euphorian film symbol, but didn't know who I was. And that was really. That was really about it. All right. Well, I guess this is it for Road to the Famous. It was great having you on, Drifter. 
Uh, it was great to be here. I guess I kind of totally drowned you out with the talking. <laughs> no, no, those are good stories in there. Interesting. Well, this is it for Road to the Famous Episode 3 with Drifter. Go check out his channel. Link will link to his channel will be in the description below. We'll see you guys later. See you, Drifter.